Well, hello. Today is the 20th of April, 2021. I'm Pastor Bruce Kishnick, Senior Pastor here at Grace Lutheran, New Albany, Indiana. Good to be with you today. The uh, title for our meditation today is Like Angel Wing Begonias. And the reading is from Psalm 84, the first five verses. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar, O Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. Some six or seven years ago, I, was, I took communion over to one of our shut-ins. Her name was Juanita Lane. She's now sainted. And as we were talking, I noticed out on her patio, she had this really pretty, very sturdy, very deep maroon houseplant, about three feet tall. It was just lovely. And I complimented her on it, and she said that that was an angel wing begonia. Then she went on to say, she said, yeah, as soon as the frost comes, it'll be dead. So I said, well, why don't you just bring it into your apartment? And she said, Pastor, look around this apartment. She said, I don't have any place where I can put it. But then she went on to say, she said, well, it's okay because I've already taken a couple of cuttings off of it. And I said, oh, yeah? And she said, yeah, I take cuttings in the fall. And I put them in water and I leave them in sunlight, she said, and they get roots on them. And then in, later in, in the winter, I pot them. And when the spring comes and the danger of frost is passed, I put them out on the patio. That one was a cutting last year. She said, I've been doing that now for seven or eight years. Well, I was intrigued by that. And so I asked her if I could have a couple of cuttings off that plant and ask her to how to tell me how to do that. So she showed me where to cut the stem, and then she said, you know, you just put it in water and put it where it gets lots of sunshine. And she said, and it'll get roots on it when it's got a good root ball, plant it in soil in a pot, and it's good to go. So, and I remember she said that begonias needed two things in particular. She said, as long as you give them lots of water and lots of sunshine, the rest of it's easy. They'll grow real well. Well, I have been doing that now for five or six years. I've been propagating those begonias. And this last summer, I had six of them out on the deck. And almost all of them, except one, got to be a really good size. And they bloomed like crazy all through the summer. And uh, they got that deep maroon color towards fall. And then just before the uh, frost hit, I went out and took cuttings off of them. And put them in water and put them in the one corner in our living room where there are windows on both sides. They do really well there and I've got five of them going again. But I took the one that was the most beautiful and I and I kept that one and I decided I want to see what these will do if I just bring the whole plant in and let it go through the winter. So I brought the nicest and prettiest one in and I put it in that corner and you know, that thing was over eight feet tall here up until this last Monday. It was over eight feet tall. It also put out three other shoots that are now over three feet in length. That thing just thrived like crazy. And it, and it blossomed off and on all through the winter. So this past Monday, I took a cutting off the top of it. And next Monday, all of those plants are going to go out onto the patio and I'm going to see what that one does. In the meantime, I've started a cutting off of that one that eventually will get root ball and I'll plant that too. In our text for today, the psalmist speaks about his joy and the contentment he has about being in the Lord's house. He says that even the sparrows and the swallows like being close to the Lord's altar. I'm, I'm really sort of glad that we have windows in the church house now so that we don't have sparrows and swallows flying around inside the Lord's house. I'm sure they always left a mess that had to be cleaned up. But at any rate, he says that in the Lord's house, he finds blessings and strength 
and his whole being, soul and body, yearn for his courts and finds joy there. And I think, you know, I know exactly what he means, and I suspect some of you do too. You know, during the COVID crisis, we were kept from the Lord's house for quite a long stretch. And what a joy it was this year. <coughs> Excuse me. What a joy it was on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and especially on Easter morning to have a lot of people in the Lord's house, people I hadn't seen for a while, people we were able to welcome for the first time in quite a while. We had 187 people in the late service. Last year's Easter service, we had 17 of us. And so what a difference that was and how good it was to be able to come together and to praise the Lord and lift up our prayers and our hymns of praise. How we have longed and yearned to be in the Lord's house. And so as the psalmist talks about that, we realize that the isolation of the pandemic had kept many of us away from the Lord's house for a while and how much of a joy it will be to have more of us together. You see, just like those angel wing begonias that I've been propagating, the Lord knows that we need two things and we need plenty of them. We need his word and we need his sacraments. Those two things are gifts that he has given us because our souls cannot thrive without them. They give us hope, they give us courage, they give us meaning and direction, and they bring us comfort and strength and assurance. And both of those gifts are best received when they're given in the Lord's house, surrounded by the Lord's people and the ministry of his called servants. That's what the church is. The Lord brings us together and puts us in a pile and blows his spirit through us. And we're able to then serve him and serve him well. And so when we are well supplied with his word and with his sacraments, we're able to bear rich and abundant fruit. That's the way it's supposed to work. We serve him better when we are fortified by the things we need most spiritually. My begonias produce big clumps of these pretty little flowers that there's two sides to them and they look just like angel wings, thus the name that they were given. But they only produce those lovely blossoms when they get enough water and they get enough sunshine. The same is true for God's people. You and I can really only bear rich and abundant fruit if we have enough of his word and we have enough of his sacraments. We produce good fruits and love one another best when we have the spiritual gifts that God has given and we have them in abundance. So we rejoice that as more and more we get to come together, as more and more of us are inoculated and have the vaccine, when we have less and less fear of COVID and what COVID can do, we look forward to worshiping our Lord together the way God's plan has always been, together thanking him and praising him for all of his blessings. And we can be nurtured and we can be equipped by the word and by his sacraments, often and with effect. May God grant that for all of us and soon. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Would you pray with me? Father, we give you thanks that you have supplied your people with the spiritual gifts they need to thrive and to produce rich and abundant fruit. We thank you for your word. And we thank you for the sacraments. And we thank you for the opportunity to come to your house and receive those things in abundance. Father, we pray that you'd help us to thrive and to flourish, that we might follow your will and that we might produce good things for you. We give you thanks for Easter and all of its joy. We give you thanks for the power and the purpose of it all. And we pray, Father, that you'd grant us your grace, that you'd keep us strong in the faith, and that you'd walk with us and guide us by your eye in all the course of our lives. Grant us your grace and be with us today, and we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Just one announcement that I want to make today. We are now getting into that confirmation period of time. Confirmation is later this year than it's been before. We're doing it in May this year because we started later. But the 8th grade confirmands, the junior confirmands, all 11 of them, are well into their preparations for Confessional Sunday. Um, just this week, they're going to turn in to me their third and hopefully final draft of their confessional statements. On the last day of this month, the 30th and the first day of May, we'll be on our Confirmands retreat. 
And then their confessional Sunday is the 16th of May and Confirmation Day on the 23rd. And so what I would ask for is I would ask all of you to pray for those young people. Pray that the Lord would send his Holy Spirit upon them to clarify what they've been learning and, and to, to embed it in them so that they never forget the richness of his grace and the goodness of his word. Um, those 11 young people need your prayers right now. They're in a period of time that's, that's going to really sort of crystallize the word for them and crystallize the faith for them. And so I would ask for you to pray for them, pray for their families, and uh, we'll look forward to watching them as they make their confession and as they are confirmed and pray that they'll never forget the rich gifts that God has given them and that they'll, they'll make use of the word and the sacraments all through their life. Thank you for that and God's blessing. Talk to you next week. Bye-bye.